In this series of lectures, we introduce some basic and important concepts in calculus. As an entry level course, we often adopt approaches that are intuitively clear but might not be mathematical rigorous. In particular, we will not use the famous absolute delta language. In this lecture, we will look at the relation between the dual table function and its monotonicity. All right, so first, let's see, let's look at a uh, simple but a uh, very important fact. Here's the, um, what it says. Okay, so suppose we know the function is continuous on a closed interval AB and it's differentiable on the interval, on the open interval AB. Then we have the conclusion. The function is continuous if and only if its derivative is uh, everywhere zero within the open interval AB. Now, if and only if means it's two direction. One implies the other, right? Now, one way is obvious. So first, let's look at this. Now, if f is constant, Right, so that means the graph of f, so this is x, this is y, and the graph of f is flat, right? So this is a and this is b. Right? For example, let's say f is everywhere is one. Right? And then obviously, we just by the definition of derivative, we know the derivative has to be zero everywhere. Right? So for all, x belongs to a, b. Well, geometrically just means the, it's, it's always horizontal. This is obvious. Now, but if you look at the other direction, so this is what I want to show. If I know the derivative is zero, right? So for all x beyond a, b. Now, can we conclude actually the function f x is constant? Well, it's constant, which means f x equals to f a for all for all x belongs to a, b, right? Uh, well, this is less obvious, and what, what we can show is we can um, we can verify this by the uh, mean value theorem. Okay, let's see. It. All right, so here I just look at, say we just look at, uh, this is a and this is b, right? Now I pick uh, just a, just a, uh, some point c between a and b, and then I look at f a and f c, right? You see. Uh, we have by the uh, mean value theorem, by the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem tells us um, if you if you pick interval AC, then you can always find a point X0. So it's okay. So there exists X0 and such that, so X0 is between A and C, right? Such that uh, this FA, FC minus FA, over c minus a, right? And this equals the derivative of this point. So this is the mean value theorem tells us. Now, let's see, recall that we here, we have assumed all the derivative is zero, right? By this assumption, it's okay. We just get this one is zero. If this one is zero, what does this mean? This just implies fc equals fa. Now this c is arbitrary, I right? can choose, you can select whatever you want, but regardless of what it is, it just tells us it has to be the same as a. So the graph of the function is flat. All right, so this is what we got from the mean value theorem. Now, uh, well, we can actually derive more. Suppose again, the function is differentiable on the open interval a, b, and then we have the following conclusion. If I know the derivative is always positive, then I can derive the function is strictly increasing uh, on the a b right all right so that means if i here look at the graph the graph so this is a and this is b the function will be strictly increasing if i look at the graph the graph will be strictly uh increasing wait hold on i'm sure all right so the graph will strictly increasing if we know the derivative is uh, bigger than zero. Uh, and it, analytically, this just means, okay, if I choose any two um, uh, intermediate uh, points, let's say this is C and this is this is D, then uh, the value of FD is always greater than value of C. So this is what we call the strict increasing. All right, so given that the derivative is positive. Okay, so how we, how we show that? Again, so let's prove this. The proof is simple, we just use, um, the uh, mean value theorem. Okay, so let's prove this. So prove, right, so let's prove one. One, okay, proof. 
So by the mean value theorem, right? Okay, so there exists a point x0, right? If I fix uh, the interval CD, I say, okay, so there exists x0 between C and D such that, right? So such that the FD minus FC, right? So FD minus divided by D minus C is given by the derivative at this point. So this is exactly what the mean value tells us. Now, what do we know? We know the assumption is this one is bigger than zero. Okay, so we have this one's bigger than zero. Now, if this is bigger than zero, implies what? Implies the FD is greater than FC. Okay, so then we have proved, um, proved uh, the first conclusion that if I know the derivative positive, then I have the function is uh, strictly increasing. Now let's look at the two. Two says that if you want to have two directions, we say, okay, if I know the, the derivative is um, non-negative, then I get the function is uh, increasing. Now you, you might be you might be uh, um, wondering, right? So, yeah, so pay attention, this is if and only if. Now you might be wondering, what's the difference between strictly increasing and increasing? Now increasing, so if you look at the two, right? So if you look at this two case, if you have two, what could happen is you could have a graph like this, right? You say, okay, I could have a graph which is go up, then get flat, and then go up, right? Okay, so then you can have, you see, this is C and this is the D, right? And within this part, right, within this part, the derivative is equal to zero, and this, and within this part, the derivative is um, is bigger than zero, right? Okay, within this part, the derivative bigger than zero, and and this part is also uh, bigger than zero, but uh, in the interior, it's um, it's um, equals zero, so you get they are the same. All right, this is increasing, but it's not um, strictly uh, increasing. So that's why uh, here we have, we can add the uh, this equal sign. Okay. All right, uh, similarly, uh, you, you can you can have, like if I know that the, the derivative is less than zero, right, then the function is, uh, is strictly decreasing. Right? If you have A and the B, and the graph of this will be strictly uh, decreasing, right? Uh, again, if you only have less than zero, then you have you have this is uh, uh, decreasing. Uh, the proof is similar. So the proof is similar. We just use the mean value uh, theory. Okay. Uh, well, and then we can use, so this means uh, uh, we can use the first uh, derivative to tell whether the function is decreasing or increasing. Now let's look at an example. Suppose the function f is a function with derivative that's given by this form. And the question is on which interval f is decreasing, right? Now, f is decreasing, we know f decreasing just means the derivative of f is less than zero. All right, so then we want negative 2x, 1 plus x squared, squared. this is less than zero, right? If this is less than zero, this is equivalent to saying the x is non-negative. All right, so then we know the, the interval is from zero to infinity. And that's the place when the function is decreasing. Example two. So here we have the function which is ex minus two x and define the intervals where the function is increasing and where it's uh, decreasing, All right? So I have fx is ex minus two x, right? Uh, as we said before, in order to find where it's increasing, decreasing, all you need to do is just take the derivative to see where it's positive, where it's negative, right? So, okay, if I take the derivative of fx, this is ex minus two. And then I'll have, okay, so from here, I'll just get uh, the f is increasing if the ex and the two, this is bigger than zero. So that means when x is bigger than two, log two, and then f is decreasing, if the ex minus two is less than zero, so that means when x is less than equal to log two. Now, okay, so that's the, the place where it's increasing decreasing. Now uh, we can use this to draw the graph, right? So, okay, let's draw the graph of the function. All right, okay, so that's what we have. Uh, this is, what do you have? We have uh, the function is when x, so this is x and this is y. Uh, the turning point is log two, right? Okay, so this is, let's say this is the place which is log two. Um, and then the function, or when, if it's zero, the function is, the function is one, right? So the function is one when it's zero. 
And that's uh, that's what we have, right? So if you draw the graph or the function, you say the function uh, is decreasing, the function is decreasing, uh, it's when it's less than x2, uh, log two, and it's increasing when it's bigger than log two, right? When it's bigger than log two. So that's uh, that's what we have. And then from here, then you see, this is the place when the function attains its, um, uh, its absolute uh, minimum, right? So that's the place where it attains absolute minimum. So that's the function, this is bigger than zero, this function, this is less than z. All right. Uh, example three, find the intervals uh, where the uh, where the function is increasing and where it's decreasing. All right, so all we need to do is find the derivative, right? So, okay, let's find the derivative. So the derivative of this will be three x squared minus two x and minus one. And I want to find where it's increasing, where it's decreasing. So I have this is three, let's factorize this. So this three x and the plus one times that x minus one, right? And then we'll quickly get, we say, okay, so we can first, we have the derivative is less than zero. Uh, the derivative is less than zero. We say, okay, so I have the derivative of x is less than zero, right? Uh, we can put the equal sign, doesn't really matter. So this is x, when x will be less than one and bigger than negative one third. And then otherwise, right, this will be uh, bigger than zero otherwise. Otherwise. Okay, right. So then uh, this is the place when the function is decreasing. And this is the place when the function is increasing. All right. Uh, then uh, we can, uh, let's draw the graph of the function. Okay, let's look at the graph, right? So, okay, um, let's draw a rough picture of this. This is zero, this is X and this is Y. Now the function is, okay, let's mark those special points. Uh, this is negative one third. Uh, this is the point one. The function is positive when you can, you can check, right? The function is positive when it's negative one. Uh, the function, it's happened to be zero, right? So it's uh, decreasing. It's one, so it's thick. And after this, it will be increasing the function. And after this, uh, this is decreasing. And after this, the function is also increasing, right? Increasing, so that's that. All right, so this is the rough picture of the function. And you see, uh, between these two regions, the function is decreasing. And then here and here, right? So this part, and this part, the function is uh, increasing. Okay. Uh, problem number four. Here we have the graph of the function. So this here, what we have is the graph of function f, and the one which you are the uh, the graph of the derivative. All right. So let's mark several special points, like a turning point. I right? say, so, okay, let's mark this point as whatever it is. A. So this is A. So you have zero, and this is B. Right. Okay. So now let's try to find um, um, the graph of the derivative. Let's see what we can get. Okay. All right, so this is this is y equals to fx. Now we are going to look at y equals derivative. All right, so this is a and this is b and this is zero. Now we are going to look at this y equals the f derivative of x. Let's see uh, what do we have here. Um, obviously the derivative of here, this is a local minimum. So this is the derivative of a is zero, right? And now this is decreasing. So I have the derivative is less than zero. On this part, it's, it's less than zero for this part uh, because it's decreasing. And meanwhile, if you look at the derivative, you find the derivative is, uh, derivative is the slope, right? And you find the slope is it's, um, it's negative, but it's increasing. Uh, but the derivative is increasing. Uh, if I look at it from negative infinity to a, all right, so this is for first of all we uh, identify that. But do you remember the derivative is just slope? Okay, so then what we have is it's it's um it's negative but it's increasing. 
So we have, that's what we have. Okay, so that's what we have. All right, so that's first part. Now let's look at this part. Say, so, okay, how about this part? Uh, this part, you see the derivative is, the function is increasing. The derivative, you know, is positive. We've got a slope, obviously, if it's positive, but it's, and, and it's increasing. The slope is also is positive and it's also increasing. Okay, so then we say, all right, so let's, um, uh, let's uh, go to the, uh, it's increasing, it's positive and it's increasing, it's increasing. So it goes over to here, right over here. Now after zero, if you look at this part, you say, all right, so how about, um, how about this part, right? So, okay, how about this part? How about this part? Now this part, what do you have? Because the function is, Increasing, right? If you look at the derivative, the slope is part, obviously. So I have, okay, I have the derivative is positive slope. But meanwhile, you know, the slope is decreasing because it's from positive and it changing to zero. So the derivative of B, this is zero. So this one will, will it's, it's decreasing, right? In this part, decreasing. Okay, so I have the function will be uh, decreasing. Okay, so we're decreasing to zero. Now let's look at the, the last part. Okay, let's look at the last part. The last part is right here. If you look at this part, if you look at the derivatives, uh, the slope obviously is negative, right? So okay, and the function is decreasing. So this one is less than zero and it's decreasing because it becomes more and more negative. So if this one is decreasing. Okay, so finally it's decreasing and it becomes more and more negative. So that is the graph of the y equals l prime x. All right, uh, example number five, question number five. Uh, here we want to show that when for all x positive cosine x is always no less than one minus x. How do we do that? Proof. Okay, so let's do a proof. All right, so what we do is we say, okay, um, I let fx is cosine x minus one minus x, right? I look at the difference. Uh, this uh, provides um, a quite um, efficient way to prove um, inequality. Okay, so okay, so what do we have? So this is cosine x, right? cosine x plus x minus one. What do we have? So first of all, we know that f zero it just equals cosine zero plus zero minus one, which is zero. Okay, that's what we have. Number two, let's look at the derivative, right? So okay, it's not so clear when you first look at this, whether this is positive or not, right? So what our goal is we want to show this guy. So our goal is want to show this. This one is not negative. It's not so clear, right? It's not so clear. We only know that at the, the starting point is zero, it's zero. But the, the question is what happens next? All right, so a common trick is let's look, let's take the derivative, right? Let's just see how the function changes. So if you look at the derivative, what do we have? Uh, cosine, let's remind ourselves, the derivative of cosine, this is a negative sine x. All right, so this is negative sine x and a plus one. But remember, regardless of what sine x it is, it's always um, it's always between uh, one and a one. Look at this guy. So this is always between negative one and one. Okay, so then I get this one is non-negative. It's one minus sine x. It's always non-negative. And this tells us what? It tells us the fx is increasing function. Now, if fx is increasing function, and you start from zero, right? So this is the x, this is y. You start from zero, and the function is increasing. Right? It's increasing. Then, of course, we say, okay, we just get the function is has to be uh, no less than the starting point, which is f zero when x is non-negative. So that's um, that's what we get. How we get this? How we regularly verify this inequality.